Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl Crank K. Mm -hmm. Que carabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. That is the story of my life. Uh, let me just put some caveats out there. Can't they look out for my captions? They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They are sometimes, therefore, as a result, very irreverent. Um, that's on me. They are sometimes misspelled the wrong word altogether, stuff like that. Like I said, that is not me. I would much rather not have to go out like that. Um, well, it's like quite freezing. Anywho, anyhow, uh, and then secondly, I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. Because it's going to be bouncing off and on my face. That's just the nature of the app. Okay. Uh, and then last, thirdly, I've got a segment. I just want to get it out of the way. Uh, basically an empathy segment. I'm pinching my cheeks to bring about a blush to display that when you prick me, I bleed. When you hurt me, I get hurt, blah, blah, all that jazz. I just want to move it on right ahead like a fast moving consumer good. That's what's good. Like, let's just let that out the way. Yes. What? Boom. Yeah, the intention is to achieve a blush like that whole situation. I don't know if it's working. If it is, great. If it's not, tomorrow's another day. Let's just move on okay yeah it's an empathy segment to show you that i've got blood in my body like just do better by me but anyway nobody really does so it's okay like right now as i'm speaking to you guys i just had a vision of south africa ending up like uh like like turkey shortly after russia went to war against the ukraine how it is that they they started to struggle so much with with food uh like they became a problem with their economy yeah uh in other words judged by collateral ja damage that's what's good uh and then months later well we all know just at what at what extreme enmity enmity turkey is at with israel so uh such countries as those in like, turkey endured that that because god was judging it and then there was like the whole horrible earthquake that happened there that massacred all of those people that tragedy you will remember um yet more judgments on a country that is at odds with god but that people don't think that god is judging it because people don't quite understand just how strongly god feels about the way that you treat israel and the way that you treat christians in your ecosystem as africa the lord has shown me is starting to become similar to turkey struggling with food because of collateral damage that's going to happen as a result of an, another country like russia for instance going to war and also because of its anti-semitism this country is just under a severity of judgment and i, I can't say that enough but y'all will just have to see as time progresses anyway let me just introduce my wig what's up y'all know that this is a wig i'm wearing it because i've got a treatment underneath listen to that listen to that plastic bag yeah moisturizing my hair i've reduced the moisturization to once every fortnight because it itches less it just works out for me so uh i'm moisturizing and i put a bag a plastic bag around my head for it to like do its thing overnight so that's why i'm wearing a wig but it doesn't, i don't really have to let you guys know that but i insist because i prefer to have my natural look okay so today's the 10th of june 2024 for those of you who are curious uh but it's actually really the 9th because i'm coming i'm hopping over into the next day because you all know that that's just how i roll right mm. it's the wee hours of the morning it's a sunday i'm supposed to be leisurely and largely i am but anyway whatever um it is what it is i didn't do shorts today so that is leisurely anyway whatever um let's just get straight into the message guys today has been a sad day for me a, a heartbroken day because of the dreams that i got i told you guys that i'm always just being bombarded by a lot of demonic attack and there's like attempts at my life so we're just going to enter into that we're going to enter into that there is presently a severity of underestimation of my person as a result of the way that i am treated by my family or not treated by my family their own mission to act their comprehensive negligence of me their disregard for my pain and my sorrow has put me in some kind of shoddy position that has caused me to get harassed lambasted looked at by unseemly dastardly men that imagine that i'm up for grabs and can get taken up okay largely the biggest reason why i'm getting so horribly treated by men um and also why does that i'm being so coerced by them and also so trashily treated by women too is because of their observation of my what would be the tenement of lack of family that has not always been my life uh this here is something that happened when and only when i, I became a christian so the um, phenomenon of being treated this strangely as a result of a lack of family is one that i had to learn pretty much late in life I, I didn't grow up like cinderella but i am like now a cinderella but one that has that has absolutely zero interest in the prince charming uh, rescuing me because i'm trying to get my life back together by myself but i did let you guys know that this is going to result um i, I believe in in the rapture 
so that'd be the prince charming jesus more than uh like a, a man a husband or even a future for me but i did also let you guys know that i vacillate between two extremes i pendulum between them where it is that i sometimes believe i i get i, I enter into seasons where i believe that it's the rapture is happening like soon and then i then after like a season like that i then pendulum back like a swing i vacillate to my future is coming my this year like because i don't really know what to look at because there are such conflicting events in the world that don't really confirm one or the other a future could happen but also at the same time the rapture could happen so right now i'm in a season where i'm basically just kind of frankly believing that the rapture must happen because what in the world is going on but i'm going to talk to that first i want to give you guys a story because y'all know I'm, I'm big on storytelling right uh of, of somebody that is sim was similar to me in this state in this situation two women actually that i knew back in the day that were in my shoes and i was not in uh, at that stage I, I was coming from an ignorant vantage point uh, this is not the first time that my my mom has been negligent of me until the world around took me for granted but the first time around it lasted so f so briefly it, it, it lasted just six months so i didn't really get to feel it even though i did feel it i was heavily suicidal during that time um but this year has lasted like 10 years and i just want to help you understand that the lord has given me a lot to run with he has given me prototypes to mock prototypes mock-ups examples essentially to look at in this world as to what happens when as a person you don't make your own unique decision within yourself to protect yourself from predators unfortunately we live in a world that is teeming at the folds with predatory human beings we we live in a world that is teeming at the folds with exploitative people and when you are in a position to be exploited more so or to put a guard up and i have one up because of jesus first and foremost and secondly because i have made observations of what happens to women who allow themselves to be preyed upon by men it's a, a shocking sight anyway whatever so let's just get straight into the matter right now right thank god he's given me wisdom the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy one gives understanding so hallelujah okay mm. thank god i got born again at the time that i got born again if i did not get saved i would highly unlikely have gone through what i went through uh what it is that i went through is causally connected it is positively correlated to my redemption uh so i would never have been abandoned by family if I didn't get saved uh, this year is because as a result of my salvation but I would not exchange it for anything I, I, I don't have regrets of my f coming to the faith I've um, found the pearl of great price I'm going to heaven I'm redeemed there's there's just not there's nothing that compares to that so even if I would never have been this badly persecuted by my family if I didn't get born again bottom line is I never would have gone to heaven, which I inevitably will, if I did not go through those waters, those muddy, murky waters. As I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of darkness, I am fearing no evil, for he is with me. Amen. Okay, let's get into, into story number one. Okay, there is this like absolutely flaming, hot scorching beauty of a woman that I met through my cousin. She used to work in the same store as my cousin uh, when she was like... Okay, my cousin has had a, quite an irresponsible life. Um, but where she was, and she ended up working that particular job because of her irresponsibility. She had to downgrade, uh, and she ended up being the manager of some store, like some retail store, like a clothing store. And in this clothing store, she had casuals, she had employees, like yeah, like uh, people, women who were um, and men, I guess, uh, boys. Uh, yeah, women. They were men. They were already adults at that stage that were some of them were working there permanently as like that was their job that was their nine to five but there were others that were students at universities um yeah there were students at universities or at colleges and what have you because that's just the nature of retail jobs they get populated filled those vacancies by kids i've worked also in retail myself when i was uh, studying at wits okay cool beans and bananas this chick used to be one of her employees okay and um Yo, like wow a lot of times in uh these these jobs these retail jobs they hire you because of how you look you know it was a clothing store it was a fashion brand that was gunning for a certain look and so in order to market its brand they had to recruit certain looking kinds of young people right uh, okay let me give you an example i used to work for guess by margiano in santon I was looking for a job, a casual job where I would earn whatever, 12 rand 50 an hour. 
on the weekends just to make an extra buck um type thing and i went to santon and decided that i was going to go to stores that i want to work at and i started first at was it was it joe bucket or jenny button or both i think i've worked at both joe bucket and jenny button right um and and also at guess in santon right okay and yes in very short like i if i left joe bucket or jenny button for guess because i just preferred guess anyway whatever so when i walked in to those stores to ask for a job I remember at, at Joe Bucket or at, okay, Jenny Button, one of those two men, it was probably like both. I think I might've actually worked at both. All right. There was, I remember this, this, this sophisticated, like older white woman. She looked like she could have been like maybe 30, right? 30 or 35. Uh, and she, I think was just like either like, I don't know, like she, like brand manager or something when she worked there, she scanned me up and down and she literally told me to twirl in front of her. Like she said, spin, like turn. Like I walked in with my CV and I was like, are there open C are, are there open vacancies here? And she, like, it was this, this beautiful white woman and she looked at me and then she scanned me up and down like that and then told me to spin around on the spot. And then she was like, when can you start? I then was able to start the next day. All right. And that's when I went, but then I, I didn't last. I, I, I was there like, I think three days. And then I just quit because I wanted to work rather at, um, at guess. And the same thing happened. I went to guess on the same day. Right. Um, and cause I was looking for jobs. I was like the, 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 the at Jenny button, they were like, when can you start? And the, the woman was like, come the next day type establishment thing. But I was not done. I was like, I want to expand my horizons. I want to, Get as many opportunities as possible so i continued to walk throughout santon and i walked into guess and there i found the manager was was was, was there and i walked in and I, I was wearing heels that day some blue heels okay because i had to look a particular way type establishment thing and when i walked into guess uh I again are there open vacancies and yet again the guy scanned me upside down and was like when can you start so essentially what i'm trying to help you understand is that when you work in that type of environment you gotta look a certain way then in that way they will let you work guess was a fashion brand for they were they were targeting uh like 18 like they were targeting young people you know it, it was yeah they were targeting a very vibrant young demographic uh so too were they targeting sophisticated looking beautiful young women at jenny button and at joe bucket so they wanted women working there girls working there that could rep represent the brand and when they were in the clothing of those stores uh therefore also sell it you know what i mean uh to the brand type of establishment thing you get my point yeah so i got hired at both places ended up sticking around at guess because of the way that i looked uh yeah and this chick th these women like the the girls that if anything, both of the women that I'm about to speak about right now, uh, the, the women that my cousin would recruit or the managing team, the hiring team would recruit in the store were recruited on the same tip. Like, you know how that white lady scanned me up and down and told me to twirl on the spot. That's how my cousin would also hire her recruits, stand on the spot and twirl, twirl. You have to represent the brand, you know? You have to represent the brand type establishment thing. So long story short, what I'm trying to get at is that the girls that she worked with were fly, like just absolutely gorgeous young women, beautiful women. And I mean, we were speaking very young. So like some of them were at varsity, were speaking uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds, very young women, extremely gorgeous. And um, yeah, just that that was the reason why they even worked at that place. So she because my cousin was was also still relatively young these chicks were like 18 19 20 21 22 we were 22 23 like yeah because i remember when my cousin was working at that uh, store that's when i started dating my ex-boyfriend and i was 22 at the time right so they were our peers but we were slightly older than them because like i said some of them were still adversity starting uh yeah they were still started studying adversity type establishment thing yeah so we were the older ones type thing yeah my cousin made friends with these uh, some of these girls and one of them was this chick beautiful beautiful absolutely gorgeous like stunning yellow bone pretty like just really beautiful i don't even know how to describe she was breathtakingly gorgeous okay yeah absolutely beautiful and she was working at the store she became my cousin's friend i then got introduced to her and also became her friend through my cousin very sweet girl but troubled life very 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 sweet 
extremely sweet great woman like sweet you know women especially when you're that gorgeous when, when yeah like you would know black women there's like a problem in our community okay uh there's a lot of attitude shade passing and when they get especially exquisite when they get especially beautiful the more attitude they give they don't they don't greet they they look at people like they stank like it's just a problem in the black community there's a lot of attitude lot, lots of bad vibes i don't even like I, I i like to say that i don't even know how black women successfully actually make friends out of each other because they so don't like each other from the moment they meet they're spawning so much they they're playing games mind games so much that i don't know how they get to a point where they say this is my best friend this is yeah anyway but uh, every so often you find a gem that does not pass you that attitude that that shade that does not have that <coughs> reverse psychology that is not out just scanning everybody up and down and and not talking to them or when you first meet them they like you know got chewed for days yeah this chick was one of them she was one of the fresh ones she was one of the pleasant surprises you know like for a for, for a woman that beautiful she was super humble she was extremely humble so essentially she was a really great all round find you would imagine for a man now if that was maybe 1928 she might have been married by an honest man but i made mention of the fact that like for instance with the gen z's uh, I, I lamented that um there are gen they, they, I, they, I, there's a video that i did where i was lamenting about gen z pursuit and them being so young and uh, and them fetishizing an older woman and what have you and i spoke about how it is that dating a younger man or being with a younger man or marrying a younger man is not necessarily problematic according to the bible the issue that's problematic right now is the modern society and how it has been fashioned is the way they think and so because of the way that men have been raised to think in this like modern era in the latter part of the 20th century and the 21st century there's just a rubbish mindset going on in there such that it becomes excruciatingly unsafe now for an older woman to be with a younger man because men are no longer trained up in the patriarchy. That's a whole video that I did. In a patriarchal way of operating, they're no longer chivalrous, they no longer have a vested duty in in them to actually care, serve, protect, love, and cater to women. They've got uh, an entitled sort of kind of experimental mindset where women are concerned. So it's not safe to allow yourself as an older woman to be with a younger man because of the fact that they're not the same. They don't make them the same anymore yeah that's what i was speaking about and then of course uh if if the man is age appropriate then you have to enter into yet another uh an analytics session where you have got to essentially ascertain that you are not dating a big baby like a, a massive baby because this whack culture in which our men are being raised can get uprooted by the individual autonomous decision of the men themselves they just make a decision to not follow that stupid grain that uh, decimates their futures later on in light of romance uh, or they somehow miraculously grew up in the right individual family and so they think well or they miraculously somehow have the right kinds of friends or ecosystem that is rightly nicely grooming or they're christian yeah but those are rare statistics those are rare types of ecosystems within which men are trained in how to think and so therefore as a woman <laughs> the best thing you can do for yourself is get born again because that enables you to meet a man that gets trained by jesus even if you might have started out in a culture that's whack he gets retrained the holy spirit recalibrates those skills you get my point mm, very well yeah but when you are 22 and yet to get born again when you are 19 and yet to get born again like i was 22 at the time i think that chick was maybe like 19 um yeah, or, or 20 like yeah 19 or 20 i think she was born in 1987 so like three years younger she was still like 19 years old like a kid right mm. yeah this this chick starts working for my cousin with my cousin at the store where they're working and she's fresh good people it's like so kind so humble so sweet so gorgeous so like she you would envy her okay that woman was just violently beautiful okay uh cool beans and bananas we all start partying together you know hanging and whatnot as young people and she becomes a friend and because we were all now always in each other's like ecosystems like i, I said okay so this woman was what is this was what is that, that what it is that she was but she had what do you call this problems problems issues like family it was scant uh, she, she came from like an environment where it is that it's like the there was no mom and there was no dad almost like she was orphaned and being raised by somewhat of a tactless or a careless aunt or something like a, a family member that not, that was not necessarily abusive but very negligent could not care less what happens 
there you know like just left to merely exist fend for yourself do what you need to do and now this chick was okay i'm not gonna get into too much detail about who she is because then the details are just gonna there's no need for me to be calling this girl out because she never did anything wrong do you understand what i'm saying but like she and her siblings had to do all that they could to survive and this is without the shielding and the protection uh like you know like in terms of where it is that they stayed was very far away from where she worked and the the, the one sibling hassled and a place because of basically fat and setting and the fat and set circumstances is really dangerous it's volatile uh, a fat and set is living with a guy that, without being married okay it was like a whole fat and set thing and how it is that she was living i think she was commuting multiple transportations a day from the place where she um stayed her life was hard she had a hard family life and at some point she was even facing like not homelessness i mean that would that would have been extreme but just pressure to get out of that environment like you're older now get out of my house you need to start getting out of my house you need to start get, uh, getting out of my house uh that kind of pressure from where she came so she did not have very caring family remaining because mom and dad were scattered either they were late or it was one of those areas no like I, I believe the mom was late and maybe well, i think both the mom and dad were late I, I stand corrected i forgot but it was not a stable environment where she came from she just made they went through high school and after getting out of high school it's like it was every man for himself and so like i told you she was 19 right so she of course went to the mall and looked for a job and she got hired based on how she looked she was gorgeous she was gorgeous she was exceptionally gorgeous so she quickly got hired in that space but she would have been better off in a call center or something she would have been better but you see that's the thing when 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 you are struggling like that it's really hard like when when there are no family members pulling strings for you to get you into a corporate um you know be, like proper yo guys like i've been through it okay i've been through it i told you i've been neglected before and with family members being able to pull in pull strings for me call in favors just choosing not to and i had to use what little sense sense and rants that i had to go to public phones you know those uh uh containers in the gassi go to some public phones and stand on the line holding for a company whose number you got on in the workplace on wednesday and hope that your king in the amount of money that you you you, uh, you have on your person does not exceed a certain amount of money in the tariff otherwise you're gonna have to hang up the phone before they answer type thing and then when they do answer sometimes they might be like sorry we've already got enough applications and when you don't have any experience at all they will tell you call center jobs available and then you call and they're like what experience do you have i don't have any have you been trained no sorry we want people that have got ex oh, joe it's terrible it's terrible i've been through that so it's very hard to get into corporate south africa from matric when you don't have somebody pulling strings for you it's rough it's super rough i got in through a learnership program i went to vits first my mom did not pay my fees so i had to drop out and so i i did not have a degree and i did not have experience and here it is that i was just roaming around the streets of this country hoping that corporates are going to call me i did not want to work in retail because i wanted somewhere where i would be given a catapult a springboard to get to where i needed to get and also i wanted to make enough money to be able to take myself back to school so it was not an option i guess or levi work there like permanently no get earning what five thousand rents a month what is that gonna yo like, i had to i had to find my way into call centers i had to find my way into corporate and it was rough and i got in through a learnership at liberty life that paid us an allowance of three thousand rands, two thousand eight hundred actually, yeah. But it was a um, a training for a year that could result in a permanent job that would pay a lot more. Uh, you know, once you get made permanent, and from there you can just pr you could just springboard, and that's what helped me along. Type of, that's how that's what started my career essentially. But before I could even get into the learnership program at Liberty Life, yeah, but I sick all phone phone calls for days. There was a time, and I already explained this, I told the story briefly. The other day, uh, when I was talking about some uh, girl that I met at some company that I was working for, well, that I was being trained by, uh, that was talking about how it is that when guys cheat on girls, they don't use protection. Yeah, that was a call, a cold calling call center where we had to call. Those were the only ones that were prepared to interview you without any experience. Yeah, where you had to call like an international people 
to sell like a cell phone contract that you don't even know how it operates because it's not South African. We had to sell T-Mobile cell phone contracts to European people. And they were, had so much attitude. They would hang up on you. They would swear. They would wonder where you got our number from. It was terrible. I did not want that. Like I wanted a call center that I could get into where it is that maybe like it, it's not selling. It's basically administrating policies or something. I finally got in, but it was rough. So what I'm trying to explain is that it was super duper califrigi, XBLE, docious, tough. It still is likely to this day to get into corporate South Africa straight out of matric if your family don't help you. If your mom doesn't help you, if your cousin doesn't pull a string, if your auntie does not call a CEO from another brother, like you, you are going to struggle to get in by yourself. You're going to have a really hard time to get in by yourself. And this chick, uh, she eventually got in, but it wasn't even by herself. She had to be helped along. So, you know, like a village, it takes a village to raise a person. But when you abandon a person that is that beautiful and the village just does not care to take care of them yo they're gonna find themselves in hot water anyway whatever so this chick was better off in corporate south africa to truly be set free from the grain of nonsense that she was subjugated to the tyranny of by mere virtue of the issue with family of being that gorgeous she was in an harm's way if she did not find an independent way out because men in this 21st century not all of them but especially at that age when we're that young they are not trying to love and cater and dote over a woman and make sure she's got uh, a shielding and also if whatever her ambitions are help her achieve them they they're just not on that tip they want her because she's so gorgeous but they're not going to make an honest woman out of her and they're not you, you give so it essentially just makes out of you something a, a use why you're something that's going to just get used exploitatively and if you don't have the mind to protect yourself as a beautiful young woman from the, that is however largely unfamilied uh, from predators you are going to just get devoured. You are going to get devoured. Okay, and this, this chick could not get into corporate South Africa. So her, her first shot was retail. And it, it caught, I guess, my cousin hired her. Or maybe my cousin found her working there already when she started working at that uh, joint. I think my cousin hired her, rather. Mm. She's working now at that place. And she's got some kind of a salary. So it's okay. She's cool. She's working. But she, she needs to be somewhere better. Like she needs to go somewhere else to truly establish solidness because she needed help for crying out loud like she was she she had to get out of the grain she was still stuck in a grain and a horrible one anyway what well, but she's beautiful now we're dealing with a gorgeous woman here okay uh that chick guys because i just explained to you her situation and also her beauty and her humility her kindness her sweetness kind of stuff kinds of things that men love you know when she's a sweet little konyana too she's not feisty we're not one of those talkative ones but the opinions yeah they they love them that way but they're not they're not they're not chivalrous enough to take care of a woman like that. It's like, it's what I'm getting at. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Yo, dudes. This chick. Ash, Shem. You know, I like, when I met her, she was single. And I, I, I longed that she would meet a guy. At the, you know, when you are still in the world, you don't really look at things in terms of marriage. Yet. You, you don't, you don't, making an honest woman out of somebody, especially when you're just 19. You, you don't think that way. Because you're in the world, you're carnal. You think you still have to grow and you're too young to get married, blah, blah. That's how worldly people think. But if you can get a, a solid boyfriend that is, that's really going to take care of you, you'll be okay. And I wanted her to date someone that was going to really love her, you know, like really love her, like take care of her, pick her up from work, drop her off in the mornings and give her everything that she needed. Do you understand? Make sure that that auntie doesn't give her too much grief. Like just ukjola for like a couple of years until she is somewhat set like a dude that would make imedi out of her i'm like take care of her i knew of a woman like when i was working at the call center this time called telly shore as a claims consultant there was a woman there um a chick there that i worked with that had a boyfriend like that like she was taken care of and i remember she was very heavily pregnant at some point she had a boyfriend that would drop her off, pick her up, and basically just, he was always at a beck and call. Every time she needed something, she would call him, and he would be like, they like a bear. I wanted that chick to have a boyfriend like that. Somebody that would pretty much play husband, temporarily. But like, not, without being married, this is, we're not, we're not, we're in the world, right? So we're not thinking, um, fornication is wrong, or anything of that nature. But a dude that is honest and responsible enough to take care of a chick that's struggling that comes from a strange background but you see the thing about that chick from 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 the company from telly show where i used to work as a claims consultant she had a strong solid family that loved her she didn't need that guy to be at her beck and call she did not need him to pick her up and drop her off because she had daddy so that dude was just basically being um 
he was like a supplement to the family he was a good people he was a good guy to the girl however if he dropped the ball like she would be hurt because boyfriend hurt me do you understand what i'm saying but like she would not be destitute she wouldn't be out on a limb she would not be suffering it appears these guys and from what i made a personal observation of they want to find women that the only reason sorry that they feel they have to respect women and love them is if they are already respected and loved it's if they come from a strong family that loves them that cares for them if they you know either both parents are around or uh, a very financially strong single mom that's got the back and she's got all these cousins that have her back and yeah basically like a strong solid family like Medea's family reunion type setup thing it's like men look at women in my country i can speak for that i can't speak for everywhere else when they come from a background like that when when the dude upon meeting this woman can find an, a whole strong family behind her he behaves himself he behaves himself they they behave themselves because of her strength of backing because by azutilana if they drop the ball she she might cry because it hurts to get hurt by your man but she'll live she'll be fine and some other dude will also treat her well some other dude will also regard her will not just merely treat her like rubbish but when a woman like it's all the stuff that i've been speaking about with clout chasing all the stuff that i've been lamenting about with clout chasing clout chasing these people who chase clout who regard a person's value based on what their families look like or what stats are you going to add to me so the person's character is of no essence the value of the of the woman is of no essence i told you that chick she was rare because of the fact that black girls can give you attitude yo they can but she was one of the fresh ones that will smile at you talk well with you never pass you shade no attitude like basically a gem diamond in the rough full package moose that top of that doesn't give all that energy doesn't have that ugly energy that ugly attitude you would imagine a man would like bust uh, like sprint even breaking his teeth to walk her down the aisle quick quick you know to take out your ball like because a chick that is all around at this lapel of black girls they will out just smile at their boyfriends and men ah oh, john and johnny oh terrible <laughs> and then go like straight face like 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 chicky out here pulling like a mean-spirited face with women and then men come into the room oh johnny tippy so <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then women go it's like whoa why you gotta be so mean to some females like what's wrong with you so when a woman is all around at just good peoples with everybody that's the kind of woman that a man does not have to like basically be afraid that he's dealing with a duplicitous rando diva she's not a diva she's she's warm dog like she's warm she's not gonna give your mom shade or pass your sister's shade or she's warm barre in the black community barre y'all know that's true black chicks got attitude for days days okay that chick was one of them you would imagine a man like i said would break his teeth to walk that out down the aisle real fast and real furious real fast and real furious but the way she was so underestimated her value as a woman the way it was just so disregarded guys because of where she came from literally like proper the whole cinderella phenomenon underestimating women to because i was like i'm tandy like oh if family it does not seem like it, when people have made a dis, uh, um what do you call this when people have made a decision that somebody's value is absent and then the whole world makes a decision that, that that person has no value even though that person has displayed time and time again before the ecosystems where they frequent that they are worthy worthy of being valued yeah this chick was worthy she was worthy by worldly standards of, of course because she was not born again she wasn't a christian but she was an all-rounder great girl like she never like she out of all like i've been bewitched by so many former friends this chick never touched me like y'all need to understand like that's the kind of virtue that we were dealing with here she never w dabbled with witchcraft even though her life was so hard yeah anyway one of them good ones you know one of those that you you really want to take home to mom type thing anywho anyhow so here it is that uh we are this, this chick i've explained those stats to you the way that men treated her guys yo first of all i told you i i, I longed for her to get a boyfriend right and a, one that was really gonna love her I remember one time we went to my boyfriend's at the time um my, my boyfriend's friend's restaurant for i think it was my birthday and we were all there all got tafuling, and then one of my boyfriend's boys came one of my boyfriend's friends came and this dude this chick was beautiful like she just stuck out like like she was impossible not to be shelled by somebody there 
okay like yeah so there was no way that a whole bunch of dudes would come and not one of them or five of them would like try and call dibs on that right this dude rocks up at this dinner and decides that he likes her and i had heard the stories of this guy from my ex-boyfriend right well my boyfriend at the time um and i knew that he was a bit of a player and i was concerned about that i was concerned this chick however was struggling a lot she was struggling and she needed a guy that was solid in his career and had whatnot and i imagine that every so often it's possible for a dude to uh what is this for a man to get his act together because he's fallen in love and the way that i, I, ha I had such a high opinion of this woman i imagine that that bugger wouldn't would not just meet her like her and then just ditch her like i i imagine that he would he was gonna stick around i imagine that he was not going to act a fool so when he pursued her even though i had apprehension because i knew his rap sheet from what my ex was speaking i thought that maybe this time around uzo uzo truly say that this guy is going to like be tranquil with her or at least um make a image you know the way that we think as black women as women jay like proper settling for being a main chick instead of just the only one at all like just in so far as you can say ngi medi or ngi rechte or shab because this dude has made you the main thing while everybody else is a side piece so that gives you a pedestal state ebatong i have survived that dating says pool i have escaped hallelujah let's just say that all right anyway whatever i i thought that maybe this dude would make out of her image because like i said i had i had a very high opinion of her and i imagine she was rare mm? this dude like takes my friend on our friend on one yana date this chick because you see that's just the thing when your sense of self-worth has been so eroded away at that you can't even pick up when a dude is obviously just, try, just trying to get something from you and then move on and also when you are suffering so much that you don't want to lose a guy sometimes you just allow yourself to have sex with him really quickly after you you start dating and she slept with him really quickly and he one night stood her guys yes yo it was it was just so terrible the one night stand he 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 just he stopped taking her calls like he slept with her and then just ditched her on some i'm done here yo as he guys like you know jewish i'm about to get like oh jewish i got like when when you when 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 you can just drive by shoot such a beautiful woman i just like i can never understand that just drive by fuzzy almost like gaga and a woman that also has so much character just drive by and you're done as shame you are spoiled shame for choice you must be spoiled for choice like you know clothes that a mom would uh, would would buy for a child to wear just for christmas and then after that you're done like when you've got the luxury you must have some options bugger you must have options to where you're gonna find another person like this yeah apparently there's more where they came from it is these kinds of men that i'm trying to explain to you guys are teaming at the faults around women like me they are not trying to make an honest woman out of a really great girl but for no jewish they want to wear something for easter or for christmas or for new year's when the fire crackers are being lit thereafter the outfit gets put gets put away go trouble because it's just too legit to be worn again and again or uh, like plates that are on display that are there to decorate room divider ya, ya gogo. but you don't you don't use you don't eat out of those plates except for on christmas or on easter if you dare get found with that plate on some random tuesday you go you go in here and probably even feel the belt of grandmother on your behind because how dare you use this crockery for some random tuesday this is for easter this is for christmas this is the kind of stuff that we dust off at special occasions that is to jewish with stuff yeah and every so odd like these these exploitative men they look at some of the most beautiful rare awesome women on the earth as things with which to ugu jewish something that you win just feel like just more christmas especially we beg oh goodness guys it's written in god's word that love your wives husbands the way that christ loved the church because the lord knows just how important love is to a woman and when you are that valuable as a woman and some bugger out to be rocking you as christmas shoes only and thereafter just ditch you even though you are so high value that you'll be the ten amount of a plate in grandmother's room divide that can only be used on christmas that's that's your value truly it's so valuable that it gets used once a year but like this dude drive buys it making that plate feel like it's worthless like it's just 
another ceramic plate that is just another aluminum cup that is just another little mukotinje fella with <laughs> within which you eat umtogo <laughs> within which you eat porridge every single morning it's got scratches and don't nobody care really and truly you can't wash it enough because it still looks dirty even when it's clean <laughs> when a guy treats you like that when you're that rare you will have yourself be eroded away at over time women lose their value over time because of being squandered by men like these when they don't quickly find out what to avoid and how to self-protect against exploitative sharks that will try and pounce on them precisely because they make an observation of the high value that is in this woman however the disregard of her person by society and due to them chasing clout they will then not make out of her something honest they won't make her a steady thing that remains they will not take care of her they will not dote over her they will not make sure that she is protected and covered they will just squander her they will just expand her use her and move on that is the unfortunate tale of glorious beautiful poor women poor glorious women if they do not quickly get married off to men that seriously take them in spite of having been so not seriously taken by so many other men they will constantly get used for their good looks until they are worn out until they have no more glory to give in other words they are aging in other words they are no longer fertile that's when they get squandered when they look back they've got such a high body count of men that they've slept with because that's what they've always wanted out of them there's no way i'm gonna marry that eh? for what my goodness she is an awesome woman but they're chasing clout and she does not have any it's the 21st century men are like that unfortunately not all of them but a lot of men are not made the way that they used to be made they they are they don't come with that original packaging of back in the day where it is that it was just part and parcel in dwelt inside the character of men to understand that women are to be um protected shielded catered to provided for and sheltered like yeah they they, they just like, yeah 21st century men just, it's about like uh, 20 king is second timothy 3 lovers of self lovers of money boastful proud if you're that boastful and if you're that proud and if you love money that much and if you love yourself that much there's no way you're gonna settle because it's called settling which is actually not because it's an upgrade partner let me upgrade you mm. there's no way that you're gonna settle for a woman that is not going to up your statistics so they get passed up like no man's business even though they're really great girls but they also get harassed later on by men who marry women for cloud and then they look back and remember there was a woman that was actually the full package just a poor one that nobody regarded they feel like these women are going to plunge their statistics until the the woman that they married that had clout uh what do you call this until the, the woman that they married that had clout frustrates them a, a typical example actually of what what happens with the how it is that these men treat women that they imagine don't have clout remember the woman that was murdered by her lover Ndutugo Shoba or through a, co a contract assassin she was what eight months pregnant when she was murdered she was stabbed and then hung on a tree to be found by people the next morning Tsehofadzo was killed because she was the side piece she was expandable according to this dude but she didn't carry the clout that he wanted in a wife but because he was busy sleeping with her he somehow you know he landed upon her and oopsie she's pregnant she fell pregnant he impregnated a side piece he was not intending on making an honest woman and this woman threatened essentially upon being as pregnant as she is the relationship with the woman that had clout the woman that this dude was going to go and magnify his statistics using do you understand what i'm saying the clout having woman was of course blind to this understanding that her man was never mind cheating on her but actively planning an assassination that that's just how much cloud chasing these people are in like he assassinated his future baby mama because she was pregnant and if at all his main chick that he was engaged to because we all know that Untutuga Sho, Untutugo Shoba was engaged to another woman to be married he knew that if that woman with whom he was about to mar get married found out that Tsekhovatso was eight months pregnant that she was likely going to just leave him so he decided that Uzombulal. he just decided that he's gonna kill her like they look at us women that have no clout like things to just swat out the way just move it out the way in favor of those that do have clout right here about some guys move it out the way to a point of being prepared in your you are going to plunge my stats because how dare you fall pregnant 
How dare you fall pregnant? He killed her for cloud. He killed her to maintain cloud. He killed her to maintain to maintain a lifestyle that he was pushing. It's like he was so shallow that he could not regard the value or the sanctity of a human life, including the one that was inside his baby mama's stomach. And he just murdered her because she was standing in the way of his, you know, like him looking really great as a dude who's about to marry a really great girl. And on the day that he was arrested, when he was arrested, upon being questioned by the police, he said to them, how long are you going to hold me for? I have got to go to work. I've got to go to work. I've got to go to work. If I am absent from my company for a couple of days, they're going to fire me. So I have to go to work. You're, you're holding me here. And I have to like, he was so deluded. He was so trying to chase a life of clout that he couldn't like, he didn't even gauge the dire or the seriousness of the situation to a point where upon being held by the police in custody due to him being a suspect, he then was like, how many days are you going to keep me here? Cause I have to go to work. My boss is going to fire me. You are a suspect in a homicide. And you are trying to go to the office. All I could think about was, aren't you even concerned what your colleagues are going to think? Now that stories are ruminating in the media about you having killed your baby mama through an assassin, a contract assassin. That wasn't too show, but that is just how dire the streets of this clout chasing is. It creates a delusion in the people partaking in it, such that they can't even see the seriousness of a situation where it is that you are squandering, squashing underneath your thumb the, uh, an entire human life in order to push your clout. And that's what happened with this chick back in the day, right? Yeah, she was just used as a once-off vaslab, even though she was high value. Because this dude was not trying to make an honest woman out of somebody. What's your story exactly? Who's your mom? Where do you come from? Ah, you're one of those struggling ones, Muse. And so for those reasons, you're pretty. And so for those reasons, I'll, I'll hit that. But I'm not staying here. It ain't got no cloud for me. She endured that for heh, the next coming years. Just on a like wire wire constantly. Every dude that she would meet would do this to her. Every dude that she would meet would do this to her. She was a high value woman that was ignored and disregarded for that value because of the fact that she had no glut. And the only time that she finally ended up with somebody that stuck around and he was a total jerk, by the way, like just exactly what I was talking about. The other dude, I was like, he's a player, but if he takes her seriously, at least he's done men. The way that this woman needed help, a lot of us settled for that. Some rando that at least stuck around. She started, the only reason why he stuck around, listen to this, right? My cousin ended up after like a year or two or whatever, moving from that job. And then she got a job at another company and she organized for her. That's why I said in order to get into corporate South Africa. No, anyway, corporate in Jefela. Somebody got to call in a favor for you. Somebody got to call in a favor for you. My cousin was called in a favor for by my mom. And that's how she got that job. She found herself back in corporate again. And then after my cousin found herself in that job, she then organized for that chick to get a job there too. There were a few, not a few, there was another girl that was also like that. Nah, yeah, also gorgeous, beautiful Maria. Nah, she, she also was a, was a, a sweet woman, right? She was not with attitude and whatnot, one of the, the rare ones. God, wow, she ended up using witchcraft against me. So I, I have no respect for people. But somebody saying witchcraft, I changed my mind, to get my mind against them. But uh, back then, she was good people's. She was also very beautiful, great body, everything. Jafela just going for her. Yena Maranana, the boyfriend from high school, right? She was dating some dude with whom she was with from high school. And he was just a no-brainer that did not make sense for her. And we all wanted her to leave him. They were together for a very long amount of time. And because of situation A, Abona, Isnax, they were cheating on each other. Like, it was just ridiculous what was going on in that relationship. But this chick was so gorgeous. She was so beautiful. And hey, hey. Like, my mom liked her so much. Um, She was gorgeous. She was beautiful. And what is this? Like, she was very domesticated. Like, she was, like, at, at Bryce. Bryce. She was all up in that pop making game, y'all. Like, she was all up in it. She was cleaning. Like, when I live very domesticated. Like, she was always just cleaning. And it didn't matter if guys were there or it was girls. She was always very domestic. Like, you know, she was just such a beautiful, like, little domestic queen. Yeah. Kind of woman that a dude would just want to go and make honest. We wanted this chick to leave that other rando with whom the two of them were just in a very turbulent relationship since high school. Yeah. And she would then go on right ahead to get used as well. In a way that I observed. Like by so many dudes that refused to stick around because Lena, she struggled with her family. There was no proper solid backing foundation. And so guys just threw her away even though she deserved so much more. She deserved so much more. She was a combination. She was beautiful facially great body everything 
was going for that girl coupled with the fact that she was a little domestic queen like that chick was just hectic okay mm. and guys just used her and used her and used her and that would be the status quo with that chick all the way up until i i guess i stopped being friends with any of those randos and that's what's good yeah yeah she had a bad rap all the way up until the end of our relationship with my relationship with everyone but the other one it got into the one that i have been speaking about at length right now uh, she got into a, a, a situation with a dude <laughs> she started she got a, a an opportunity excuse me to work at um at the company where my co my cousin had also moved and my cousin hooked her up and because of how my cousin had hooked her up she was better now in other words she had more support more respect that even though she didn't have family to have her back she had my cousin and all of us it's like that job that she worked at that retail store and the friendships that she would muster from that time going forward gave her some semblance of protection so it evidenced that a, a woman does not have necessarily to have a strong mom dad aunt uncle grandmother biological in, uh, environment for society to respect her as clout heavy she just has to have a, a strong support network of people that treat her like family so it could be friends that essentially take you in that make all the difference and it made all the difference it literally made all the difference when this chick got helped along by us by my mom by my cousin men stopped looking at her like something to just hit and quit so when she started working at this company she was one to you know, she was she so she was so fly that every like every guy was breaking their teeth on some who's that dude who's that chick that works where who's that who's that who's that who's that right and one of the people that was like hubani 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 was some dude that had some pretty like awesome job in that joint and he ended up losing it blah blah it's like a whole story seborang so that situation but anyway whatever she regarded him he pursued her she dated him he was a player for days but he made a decision and back then that was apparently allegedly enough when you are a rechte, that's enough when you are the main chick that's enough he was playing her like no man's business but he was serious about her he moved her into an apartment uh that they were staying in not far from the company where they worked so she got out finally uh from what you call that from where the house where it is that she was given grief where she was staying um he set her up but then he lost his own job because of some st strange stuff he was doing and then she ended up she fell pregnant blah blah like a whole whatever look i believe she's married to that dude today i believe and I, the only reason why i believe that is because she she asked friendship she sent me a friendship request on facebook about two years ago and her surname had changed to that of that dude okay so uh i accepted her friendship request and realized that oh she married that jerk i thought he was a jerk because he was cheating heavy but unlike the hit it and quitted situation it was uh, uh, one step up even though the dude did not make any sense at all and like i said the thing that made the difference in the man's pursuit and decision to stick around to love her to introduce her to his mom to take her among his people to put her in a house and ascertain that she is catered to was support she had she gained support from us from the world around her they loved her until she had so much shielding that dudes stopped just taking her for granted they stopped just taking her for granted so i mean in a society that fickle where, where men are that fickle where they make a decision to love a woman only because everybody else you tanda when you are an unloved woman you've got to see that for what it is you have got to put a litmus paper out in the wilderness to test the, the climate and therefore shield yourself from being Use the vasla banje for the day, like the kinds that you get at hotels. You use it once and you throw it away. If you don't want to be uh, used like sanitary towels, a tampon, once use once and throw away, flash your, you will recognize your culture for what it is. You will see your country for what it is. You will spot it for what it is. You will realize that you are better off being an ugly girl where if you have no family, because then you are unlikely going to get exploited by men because of your lack of looks. Because if you're beautiful, you are going to have the ugly girl experience. Just, however, first with people drive by shooting you. They are going to roll around in your environment and get out. They are going to hit it and quit it. They are going to make out of you a bullseye to toss. Even if your character is sweet. I made those observations of those two girls. Great women, marriable, good quality. And yet with a 
namby-pamby culture of modern day men making a decision that they're not worth a while to make honest and so hitting it and quitting it i then made an observation of one of them finally being given support and upon gaining support a man finally took all that glory and saw it for what it is and made an honest woman eventually out of her first he impregnated that's just the, the chronology of things in this world first impregnation and then marriage type setup thing but she finally she ended up married to him and that whole situation happened precisely because of the fact that when he came into the picture she had a hedge of protection around her coming from us she had a, he a hedge of protection around her coming from us that's just the way it is that's just the way it is things will never be the same type setup thing i personally have endured a similar situation where a dude tried to hit it and quit it when i was um 20 2021 20, yeah and i was working at the call center uh, go tell you sure but you see i was a call center agent i was not I, I, I was not necessarily without family or anything like that but i was a call center agent trying to climb my way back up again I like to I was trying to take myself back to school to finish my degree and I met a guy go Melville in one of these like clubs there on 7th Avenue and cute dude you know and everything he had a, he liked me in the club pursued me and I gave him my number he called me and the first date was so romantic the first date was so cute like he took me to one of those uh you know those is it like a burrito or a uh, wrap hot dog stand just like outside of the office and we he bought he bought me that and we sat next to his car almost like in a picnic situation but on the pavement and just ate and like chatted during his lunch he worked i worked at Telishore um in in auckland park and he worked at kpmg he was a graduate from vince university honors uh going back to study and he was uh on a professional track a, a professional uh c8 track account chartered accounting track he was still very young like 23 i was 20 21 right mm. so he was basically a newbie like an intern good thing but f facing a, a great future like he was going to be something very successful one day like i told you he was on a ca track a chartered accountant track yeah and this was the kind of dude that if at all i was at vits if i was still studying at vits he would have taken me seriously because he liked me a lot it was clear he would have taken me seriously because his girlfriend is studying and she's going to graduate and one day also work for PricewaterhouseCoopers or KPMG or one of these firms. And the two of us are going to be basically a power couple. But when he got to finally know me, when he gauged the statistics of who I truly am, right? Yeah, he then started to make a decision. I can't make this chick a serious woman. Why? Because U7's is a call center. She's like some claims consultant. What am I going to do with that? I am on a CA track. I am a chartered accountant in the making. And I work with other young women in my company that are also on the CA track. They are graduates from university. What am I going to do with the woman that's not studying? What am I going to do with the person that's not studying? What am I going to do? I was going to take myself back to school. If at all that dude has sat around to listen to me longer than just that first date, he would have realized that what he imagined he had found that night was right. He would have seen that I was right for him. Anyway, yeah. The second date, the first one was that cute little date where he came to pick me up for lunch at my offices. We we worked not far from each other. Yeah, and we had that luncheon uh, uh, from like that hot dog slash burrito wrap stand, whatnot. And it was all cute, you know. Uh, it was very, very content. Like it, it, it was city girl, man. It was, it was giving Sarah Jessica Parker and Six and the city. I don't know. It was cute. Like it, it was just such a cute first date. Anyway, whatever. Cool. Yeah. The second date, you are not going to believe it. The dude calls me at night and I'm expecting that maybe we're going to go out since we met in the clubbing scene. I thought maybe we we're going to go to like 7th Avenue, dance, 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 and then he'll take me back home. But he drives me to his apartment and I'm like, okay, picks me up at home, drives me to his apartment. And I get there confused because you picked me up at my mother's house like, and I didn't even eat and I didn't even know that we're coming to your place. You just brought me here. Why am I at your apartment? We get to his apartment. And I sit there and I'm thinking maybe he's going to cook. No food, no pizza, nothing. And the dude starts trying to like pounce on me and kiss me and what have you without us even talking. Completely different 180 dude from the one that I had lunch with. That was such a good guy. That was telling me all of these stories of his past. And now he is just trying to hit that. And he wasn't even drunk. He wasn't high. He was sober. He made a decision that, oh, now I'm going to have sex with her and I need to get it over and done with because I'm not sticking around because she's not in my league. He made a decision that was not in his league. He would have probably been 
like his he would have lost his mind if he had met me just a few years later when that was sang if he had if i had bumped into that guy just a few years later because i would go on from that point to essentially violate the corporate ladder i i grew so fast that within the next three years i was essentially in his league and maybe then some he would have looked at me like he was going <laughs> he would have melted and bombed on the spot if he had met me just three years later because i like i said i had skyrocketed if he had just waited if he had just the two of us he would have seen <laughs> yeah he would have seen who he was dating he would not have underestimated this woman. I would go, I ended up going back to school part-time the next year, the very next year of, of meeting him. I took myself back to school. I registered again at Vits. And then my career just skyrocketed. And if he had seen me three years later, Mengaz Okala, he was going to cry. And the reason I say he was going to cry was because not only did I um succeed in my career, but cloud too. I gained it like a lot. Plus, I'm beautiful. I, I, that's why he liked me. I, he he liked my physical appearance, but you see, that's the thing. When you are physically attractive, that's all that they're trying to gun for. This dude made a decision. Or he was blessed by not bumping into me again. Because if he had bumped into me again, I was going to him. I was going to him. I was going to tell him where to get off. I was not going to allow him to date me. I was not going to let him take my number and this time try to take me seriously. He 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 became lucky that he never saw me again. He became super duper lucky, given that I was always in the Auckland Park area in his uh, in the general vicinity of the company where he worked. Um tough establishment thing if he had seen me again megas was lying he was going to go crazy he spoke too soon that's what i'm getting at he acted too soon takes me to his apartment pounces on me like a beast trying to kiss me and i'm like whoa what are you doing I'm, i don't want to do this i'm not ready like what's what's up with that and guess what he said he was like well if you don't want us to do this i mean i guess there's no point for you to be here he properly said that guys with with that shrug and that side like you know profile on some i guess there's no point for you to be here he said to me if you don't want to do this, in other words, if you don't want to make out with me and then maybe even end up in the bedroom, what's the point of you being here? You pick me up at my mom's house to basically have sex with me and then, um, lastly, why? Because Mr. Ben's a call center. Because I'm working at the call center. I'm a claims consultant and you are on a chartered accountant track at KPMG. And that's why you want to hit it and quit it. I knew immediately that that was what was going on with that guy's mindset. I was like, well, I mean, okay, cool then, dude. Oh, since I petrol a limo lifing, please take me home. Thankfully, he was decent enough to, after driving all the way to Florida, where I used to stay, um, drive right back again to Florida. Because he used to live uh, in, was it Norwood? He stayed in Norwood. Yeah, drove all the way back to Florida to drop me off at home. So thankfully, he didn't just dish me on the streets to, like, gather dust. He he, he took me back home. And the drive back was, was very awkward. It was very awkward. It was quiet and, and odd. And I was looking out the window. I wasn't even emotional. I was just like, I dodged a bullet. I, I had not caught so such strong feelings for him that I would imagine that this here is a, is a severity of a loss. But I remember just thinking, I, I dodged a bullet. I did. If I was one, if I was like my, um, my, my friend, that one that I just described now. And, and, you know, just let myself, because of having been chipped away at inside, in my self-esteem, slept with a dude, I would have been hit and quit. And I've never been hit and quit, like, ever in my life. So that would have been like a, a new little experience that I'm hopping into on some, hey, so this is what a one-night stand feels like, where a dude does not call you again the next day or even remember your name. He would have given me a one-night stand experience when we would have had such a beautiful lunch. Just two days prior to that, he made a decision, this guy. That I did not have sufficient clout, but I was beautiful enough for him to peruse my nether regions. And he rudely picked me up from my mother's house, drove me to his apartment, tried to kiss me. I reject him and then he tells me, I guess there's no point for you to be here. And then he drives me back home in a very awkward, awkward drive back. It would seem very silent. Yeah, that is the South Africa that I have been making observations of. Once I gained clout, only then were men trying to love me. Do you understand? All the way down the aisle when i was working at mtn i got slapped by i don't know because i had all that clout i had these tests that these dudes were like yo if i were to you know karabo, she's this and that and what about a fish paste and she's going to look really good next to me Futumuse, and she's like this program manager blah blah yeah oh wow okay mm. so i got slapped quite a lot of it like my my um once my ex and I uh, broke up, I got hit with, with lots and lots and lots and lots of, of Corbella, like a lot, my, but like colleagues on some, you're going to be mine. I'm going to marry you. Got all of these dreams, but by then I was already born again. I had clout. Before I lost everything, I had the clout that men would imagine. This is my woman. I was like headed for big things and I was going to be now made an honest woman by some pretty dastardly men that would 
under normal circumstances grab a woman that does not have much and just pick her up at her mom's house take her to his apartment to have sex and then just drop her off again but the same woman three years down the line he would take to mom the same woman three years down the line he would introduce to his friends his sisters the same woman three years down the line he would go do, uh, do ring shopping to propose marriage the same woman three years down the line he would take out ilobola why because she got clout she got the degree or she is working a really big job or she is a, a youtuber with four hundred thousand subscribers which is what it is that i'm facing right now a woman that has got nobody looking at her on social media if i were to gain thirty thousand subscribers in the next four months all of a sudden a whole bunch of men that have watched my videos all this time in all of my poverty while i'm gaining five new subscribers a week would start dming me blowing up my phone like no man's business on some hey girl i love your ministry trying to see if he can't get with someone that he found on the internet clout is the only difference it's not like they can't make an observation of the value or the quality of a woman it's that when she does not when when she's not backed up by you know certain statistics i she ain't with my time dog she's not with my time dog this one oh don't she's gonna plunge my stats and i've had that problem where does that uh, that kind of dream where the lord has shown me some dude saying i can't be with a woman well as if though i want anything to do with you you're like the dude from kpmg yeah a, a man that would have been like, whoa, Karabo, I recognize, girl, so what are you doing now? And then next thing he's trying to be all up in my grill, making like a tsetse fly, just flying around all over my ear. Mm, when he was trying to hit it and quit it at some point, but now he's trying to see if he can't be with me for six months and then pay lobot. Same woman, different stats. Same woman, different stats. Like it happened with that chick the, 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 from, from uh, the retail store that used to work with my cousin. As soon as she gained some kind of, her stats changed a little bit and she was supported and she had a nine to five job in a corporate all of a sudden, a guy was prepared to make an honest woman out of her. But before then, she was just used as Eva Slapa. That is, you could throw away in afterwards. She was used like a tampon. Use it once and you're done for. Flush it down the toilet. Yeah. But then as soon as she gained clout, she was loved and respected. Do you not imagine that what has happened these past couple of years that I've been suffering like this was God's plan? To protect me from clout chasing men. Clout chasing men. Do you not think that the Lord has kept me poverty stricken for the purpose of eradicating clout chasing men? Men that will take me on a sweet first date. Where we're out here eating some burritos. In front of a car looking like we're picnicking in Melville. And then next thing, pick me up at night. Got nine busihu. At my mom's house, I'm thinking we're going Melville dancing again. Since we're young. So why not paint the town red, the night red? But now we're not dancing. We're going somewhere to essentially smash. Only for me to be taken back home and not called again. And upon rejecting such an advance as that, I was literally vocally spoken to, told by the words of said man as that. That, I, I mean, what's the point of you being here if you're not prepared to do this? He said it with his own words. That if you are not prepared to have sex with me tonight, you might as well go home. And then he, at least decently, cordially, at a minimum, I will give that much to him, he drove me back home. He drove me back home. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, y'all need to understand that. <laughs> anyway, women... You, you must protect yourselves when you are beautiful there will always if you're suffering be somebody prepared to squander that beauty uh, expand it use it you know stretch it like elastic see what he can do with it essentially loot you plunder you like use you for spot parts spare parts use your nether regions your breasts but not the fullness of who you are if you are beautiful somebody will always be prepared to plunder you there is something to take you will be booty do you understand what i'm saying for the salvaging like after war, taking plunder, taking booty. Yeah, please no, don't imagine me speaking that other nasty word. I'm speaking about the, the word that speaks for plunder. Yeah, you, you will be plunder after war. A man will salvage you that way. They will purge on your body because of what is your barren ecosystem. So when you are still suffering in this 21st century, unfortunately, men are not as chivalrous as they used to be. You cannot not be that guarded. Not now. There was a time when damsels in distress we're chivalrously adored by men but it's we're not living in that we're living in two timothy three days where men are lovers of self lovers of money boastful proud narcissistic like no man's business cloud chasing enough to go and kill Tsehovatsopule because the woman that has cloud would dump him if he found out that he's got a nine month uh an eight month pregnant side piece they they kill they like proper that dude killed his side piece to maintain cloud to a point of telling the police when am I going home? Because I need to go to my job. I would, I'm going to get fired. They, like no regard, even in the slightest, for the sanctity of human life. That is the 21st century that we're living in. Because of an increase in lawlessness, the love of many grows cold. And when you're dealing with that level of crazy, 
You gotta protect yourself from exploitation as a woman. You cannot let yourself be squandered and be used as spare parts. When you are en route somewhere, you are going somewhere. God is doing something. He is chiseling you. He's refining you. A crucible for silver, a furnace for gold. The Lord tests the heart. A testing season is hard. So you will be a little bit grubby, you know. Maybe you might have a chubaba that a, a dermatologist can get rid of in due season. You, you might have some acne because you don't have the right skin care. You might gain a little bit of weight because you're stressed or even lose too much. You might, you know, put on some cellulite around certain parts of your body because you're eating too much sugar now from stress, too much salt. But that's all stuff that you can deal with in the gymnasium when you are fine again, when the sun starts rising in your life. So during the season, when people are making an observation of the beauty that you have, however, with no support around you, you gotta be self-protecting. You have got to individually make a unique decision yourself to not allow a man to drive you to his apartment to have sex with you and then drop you off at home burping, wiping with a napkin the sides of his mouth after just having you. You you have to make the decision I made. Look at a dude out trying to pounce on you on a couch that had taken you initially on a very cute romantic first date and be like, but why are you trying to kiss me? And then he will come out with the truth and the reality of the fact that what am I going to do here with you just sitting here having a conversation about what? Data? About what? Work? About school? I'm not trying to do that. I want to have sex and you don't want to do it. So go home. He will at least come out and be honest. Thank God he wasn't a rapist. He didn't take what he wanted anyway. He was decent enough even to drive me back home. But I was wise enough to realize that here I'm not going to be hit and quit by somebody that made a decision that seeing as he is a, on a chartered accountant track at KPMG and I'm just a call center at, at, at Telesure at Hotline Insurance that I am not in his league. He made that decision prematurely. Like I said, if he had seen me three years later, he would have probably died. But I was selfish. I was protected from ending up scraps burped by a man or Jewish and be somebody beautiful that was that had a future that was guaranteed but he spoke too soon or he acted too soon he decided too soon he basically abandoned his manhood at the door and refused to do that which men are supposed to do love a woman cater to her adore her if she is a good thing if she is with virtue and character hold fast to her because hey it's hard in these streets it's a jungle out there if you find a woman that has character just basic character and she's beautiful on top of that understand they don't come just pouring out of a box like what a lot i got and i'm a smartest they are few and far between they are rare so if a man finds a woman with good character hold on to her you don't know what in the world she's going to become in five years in two years She's a flower that's going to blossom, do you understand? In your girl, and she's got character. But these slay queens, these Jezebels, man, how copiously scattered all over these streets they are. They are thrown all over the show. They have got personalized number plates speaking about how it is that they they dibova, diboso, tsa chalete. They are um they they underestimate men, undermine them when they don't have much. They would never be rattled out with a dude that's struggling. A dude that is still trying to, you know, find his feet. They would never stay with a guy like that. Women like these are all over the show and they're the ones that tend to have clout 24 hours a day. And these guys are prepared to go and pay Amalobola for them only for them to come back and try and bother Tina. They were of great value. When now they are divorcees or maybe HIV positive, have four different baby mamas and all that jazz. It's like, but like I met you when I was just 21 and you were working at KPMG and you underestimated me because I was a call center agent. And now with your four different kids by four different baby mamas and two ex-wives, you now want to see if we can't talk. Especially considering I'm still struggling in a way that I was struggling back then. But this time around from a vantage point where you have seen that cloud chasing, I, I, it doesn't work. These women that you go and, and, and gun for in the name of clout, they are so taxing. They're so rottenness in the bones of men. They're so dis uh, destructive to the um, mission and the focus of men that now he doesn't care anymore. That you don't have clout, but by then his stats are whack while yours are still pure. That's what's going on with me. That's what's going on. Let's move to the next part.